Today we're making this and these to shoot this. So a couple of the items that I found at Lowe's when I was poking around, these risers, the cool thing is they have these threads on them. So I found these connectors. So we can actually take these two pieces and connect them into one so you can get the proper length for a blowgun, or you can shorten it down to have something a little bit more compact. And then for the mouthpiece, I found these connector points, which are actually made out of water grade PVC pipe, so it's not gonna poison you. And then I got these plugs to plug the ends of the T. So the idea is that we're gonna take the T grip, drill a hole through here so the air can get through, and then this side will screw into these lengths of pipe. So make sure you get the half inch. Three quarters is gonna be a little bit too big, and your blowgun's just gonna have to be, uh, it's not gonna be as efficient to run. So I'm just gonna take these plugs, jam them into the ends, pretty strongly, repeat on this side, and you could pry those out if you wanted to, but I think they're gonna stay. Then I'm gonna take this connector, so this is threaded on both sides, I'm gonna take it for the threads here, go ahead and thread that in, and this by itself already looks pretty cool, it looks like a little muzzle break on the end of this thing. We're gonna shorten this up a little bit, because I think two lengths of this is gonna be way too long, and because it is PVC, it's not gonna be as straight as metal or wood, so it's gonna have a tendency to wanna to bend down, so by shortening it, we're gonna give it a little bit more structural integrity. Okay, so that's about as tight as that's gonna go. And then I'm gonna get a hammer from over here and tap these in a little bit. So that's sufficiently tight. And then I'm gonna take this length, and I think this is the length that we're gonna cut maybe into half. And you want your pipe to be a little bit longer because it allows your breath to stay behind the dart longer and push it faster. So let's cut this in half now. Right here, that there are some plastic fibers, and these are what you want to avoid having inside the blowgun just because you don't want to accidentally breathe that in. So, we want to make sure we get all these cleared out, and then we want to probably go and rinse out the pipe itself with some water. So, I'm going to go ahead and drill out the hole on the end so that we can put the darts and we are able to blow through it. And then I'm going to be real careful and try to get right into the center of this. And to start out, I'm going to just try to put this in the center and just kind of by hand turn this so that way it doesn't slip off the round pipe and mess me up. But there is actually a molding line on that pipe so I can kind of see where the center is. So at this point I've got a little bit of a divot into the plastic so it's not going to fall. So I can go ahead and start to spin this. looks like we're through now so this is the hardest part a lot of times where you break through and there's still parts that are on the edge so what I can do is I can use this rat tail file and use that to break away the edges that are still up so I will just kind of work my way around this and push the rest of this plastic in so now onto the darts I've got one of these darts here this is the Probably, I don't know, I made a set of six darts when I was younger, and this is one of them. This is actually an interesting mix of material. So this is the spoke from an umbrella that I bought at Goodwill. They're tempered, so they're pretty flexible, very strong, and they sharpen well. The fletchings are actually made out of alpaca fur. I went on a field trip to an alpaca farm, and I was like, oh, can I have some fur? And they're like, sure. So this is the original dart I just talked about. We are going to replace it with a slightly different style of metal rod. I do recommend if you can find a umbrella, snip all the ends of the wires off and then you can make blowgun darts out of them. Or uh, bikes, all the spokes on a uh, bike's wheel would work as well. I wanted to buy a bunch, so I went to Lowe's and I bought the wires that people use to hold insulation up in their basement. We actually have some over our heads now. They take it and they bend it in between two pieces of wood in the rafters and it holds the insulation up into the ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna snip them down to size so they're the proper length. I believe I've got, I cut one earlier here and I'm gonna cut them to about here. And whenever you're cutting metal, you wanna make sure that you have some safety glasses of some sort, protect your eyes, because you never know what might go flying off. And I've had several things hit me in the eyes over the years just from us doing different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go like this, I'm gonna crimp it a little bit and then I'm gonna rotate it. And what that does is keeps this from bending the metal. And I could cut straight through this, but it's gonna actually damage the metal. So what I've done is I've scored it and now I should be able to snap it and it just kind of snaps right off. And then I'm gonna make sure that they're equal. So there's a little bit of extra here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing again. And what I've done is I've actually marked where I want it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way around. 
like that. And then I can just break it off. So now we have all these. So this is what you'll have to start out with. So we've got our darts and now we need to put some fletching onto them. So we're gonna use some pillow stuffing that I pulled out of a pillow that was no longer being used, I hope. And we are going to glue it onto the darts. So, but before we do that, we are going to sharpen the darts just a little bit. To sharpen the tips of these, you can use a metal file to speed up the process a little bit and make a little bit of a blade on the tip. I'm gonna actually use a peening hammer on this vise. So if you have not done any hammering on your vise and this is nice and flat or if you, it's not yours, make sure you ask somebody before you hammer on these because a lot of people will not do that because it will damage the surface here. And like I said, it's a preference. A lot of people will use an anvil for this kind of thing. We have done this a lot of times with this. It's been very multi-purpose for us, so we really don't mind at this point. Um, I'm gonna wear hearing protection just because over the years, hammering will add up and can damage your ears. So I'm gonna put these on and some safety glasses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hammer the end flat and I'm gonna kind of roll it. So, And this will help speed the process of uh, filing because now I'm not going to have to file this side of the metal but now you can see it's actually getting flat kind of like a knife edge so I'm going to take this way down actually I think I'm going to put it in like that the one thing you want to be careful about when you're doing this is when you're sharpening something like this don't slip off and hit your wrist or your hands it'll get you pretty good so I'm going to take a little bit of an angle here with this metal file I'm just going to do strokes like this take that edge off pretty happy with that yeah, that's a nice, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty sharp. And it doesn't need to be said, be careful with these when you're using them. Um, just, it's just something that takes a little bit of responsibility to use. It's gonna be fun, but don't be dumb with them. All right, so this part, I'm gonna put the fletchings onto the darts. So the way I do this is I just take some super glue and I kind of do it in stages, a little bit at a time. So. I'll start out with the front and I just kind of put a bead of glue around right here and then apply it over about half an inch. Don't want to do too much at once. It won't stick as well. So I take a piece of pillow stuffing and I kind of wind it into a clump like this so it's nice and strong. And then I take the dart and I put it through the center and then I just make sure the glue gets nice and on it and kind of wrap the fibers around where I've put the glue and then I just give it a second to dry. So now I just kind of sweep this out of the way and I'm going to repeat just a little further up. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more glue, grab a little more of this fluff. I'm gonna twist it and kind of make sure it's all just stuck in place nicely. So now I've got a bit of a fletching in place. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got some thread. I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of wrap this around, around the fletching. So I've wrapped it a couple times till it catches and now I can just spin the dart. And then you take one strand and you can kind of weave that up through the fletchings and that actually helps hold the fletchings on and in place. But see, since it's fluffy, it, the thread ends up getting hidden in the mess. So then at the very end, I'm gonna wrap it a couple times and then I'm gonna wrap it actually, I think until I can see the, the string so I can glue it rather than tying it, it's just a little bit faster. And then I'm gonna get my super glue and put a bead right there on the string to hold it in place. Grab my scissors, trim the trim that off we're about done i'm just going to kind of do like this to make sure there's no extra i can now i'm just going to take some super glue and kind of take the super glue and put it onto the thread and that's going to make that string really strong and there that's pretty much finished so we finished the blowgun and we finished all of these darts so now i'm going to take a couple shots at this cherry tomato see if i can get a hit on it 